What's up my loves? My name is Paige, this is Pages with Paige, and today we're going to be doing my November wrap up. This is actually going to be part one. I have read quite a few things, just, just a smidge, for Believeathon, and so I want to split them into two parts, doing my normal non-Believeathon reads for this one, which will be relatively short, and then I have my Believeathon one, which is 23 books, and yeah. So we're going to do this part one, be my non-Believeathon reads, even though I did read them in between my regular reads as well. Majority were done in the last part of the month, so I've decided to just make that separate and go through them that way because I, I can't. Originally I was like I should do a mid-month wrap-up because I read like 2,000 pages in the first week. Yeah didn't end up doing that because I was still sick and then now we're here so we're just gonna do regular wrap-up then believe upon. Hope you don't mind. I will be telling all the statistics in this section and then for Believeathon I will just be talking through the books and the prompts that they correlate to. Diving into the statistics. First things first, I read 32 books in the month of November. Three of them were picture books and then we had 23 middle grade so they were a lot faster but then I still had some really chonky ones uh, that I read in the first week or so. I participated in numerous readathons that really structured my reading to have them done by particular times and I think that really helped. I haven't touched a book and it's now the 2nd of December and I'm not going to touch one tonight and it's kind of glorious though. We're saying that I read 9036 pages which equates to about 301 per day and it equates to the average page per book being about 282 pages. My average rating was a 4.41 and I am stoked. Middle grade usually will get five stars from me. I just love everything about it. Hear more about that <laughs> later in the piece. I'm really happy with that average rating. In terms of genres, I read two classics, three contemporary, 18 fantasy, two graphic novels, one historical, one nonfiction, one paranormal, one poetry, one romance, one sci-fi, and one other. I'm not really sure what to categorize it as. It is in the believe -a pile so we'll get to that later. In terms of format, I read three audiobooks, one ebook, nine physical books, one ebook and audiobook combination, and 18 physical and audio combos. For ages, I read five adult, one new adult, three YA, and 23 middle grades. For ratings, I gave 13 five stars, six 4.5, nine four stars, two 3.5, and two three stars. For standalones, I had 12 books, and for parts of series, I had 20. The thing is though, I started six new series and completed one of those already and completed off another one. The rest were just continuations on and I'm so happy with that. My biggest book was Winter and my smallest was The Curse of the Vampire Robot. And my listening hours, this is what happens when I get sick, is 58.2. What the fuck? So with all that being said, let's dive into the books that I have that were not middle grade. So the first one that I finished was Pashmina by Nnedi Shanani. This is a beautiful YA graphic novel. I originally picked it up thinking that it was going to be middle grade based off the illustrations, but it definitely reads a little bit more YA. That really nice bracket of 10 to 12 year old and then a little bit older if they feel so inclined. It was a great read. I gave it four stars. It's absolutely beautiful and I loved the different illustration style. So when they're in our world, it's this monochrome and then when they head to the fantasy world which is India it's so vibrant and it's it's beautiful. I think it did a really good portrayal of getting to travel to somewhere that is so beautiful and majestic. Can't speak on the rep but I know that it is own voices and it was just a wonderful read. Next I read House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J Mass, which is the first in the Crescent City series and I'm giving it five stars. I genuinely thought before reading Akatar that Sarah J Mass was not for me but I'm trash for Mass. Maybe I, I don't know what it is but uh here we are. Don't read the synopsis 
<laughs> just go in blind. So this was on the Discord that I've created, which is just Buddy Read Chaos. So if we ever want to read a Buddy Read a book, we can just put it in there and go for it and have some discussion. <laughs> Poor Erin is reading this being like, is this the same fucking book that you all read? Because we were going to off jobs just like, oh my god. And then I think it was Erin that said that not reading the synopsis was a great way to go into it because there is a twist that gets mentioned, which I knew before beforehand and felt not dampened my experience but I was waiting for it to happen whereas they were like oh I didn't know this was going to happen and then it happened and then they were like cool try not read the synopsis essentially there's this girl who lives in Crescent City and it's her dealing with paranormal beings and many many different experiences there is romance in this and it is not I wouldn't say it's the main focus, but it's not a small focus. It's definitely there. I really felt for Bryce and her portrayal of different emotions and just who she was and how she presented herself. And it was it was wonderful. I did not see that ending and I am actually going to pre-order a hardcover edition of book two because this was gifted to me and I want to continue on with the sets because I really really enjoyed this. Next up I read Winter. I read this in three days. I read this in two. I was laying on my couch dying just listening to the audiobook. This ha I'm not ready to let these characters go. These characters have delved into my heart and burrowed themselves in and are staying there. I think the dynamics are really interesting in Winter because everything is finally coming to conclusion. This was the conclusion to the main story arc. There is still Stars Above, which is a collection of short stories, but what we're following in here is done. I was not brace for any of it. It was glorious. I gave this five stars, obviously, and I just, I don't want it to be over. I am having so much fun and I, I know I still have stars above, but it's not the same as having this arc. I know the story is over and I just, I want to spend more time with these characters. And the plot is intriguing and it is very fast paced. Her pacing feels really, really good, but it's the characters that have made this for me. And having the different characters be based off different fairy tales is something that I adore. And it just, it's so wholesome. I, I'm so not ready, but alas. The Lunar Along is coming to a conclusion. I will leave a link to, below to Amy and Danielle's channels who were hosting because they are deciding to continue with different series. It will be alternating series per the year. Uh, so we will be doing, we'll be doing a Discovery of Witches and the Model Instruments next year. I get to continue on with the group, which was what also made the Lunar Along so amazing, was being able to chat and just purge all my thoughts into the Discord. So I'm excited that we're still continuing, but yeah, I I, I love this series so much. Then I read Marbles by Ellen Forney. This is a memoir of Ellen's diagnosis with bipolar and her coming to terms with that being a creative person and having the stereotype and stigma of the crazy artist and her journey through not wanting to be medicated because the associations have been that it would dampen your creative spirit whilst trying to juggle having a mental illness that causes you to have super highs where you're not really conscious of what you're doing and all the events are going on to massive lulls that you cannot move you're constantly crying and it it was really interesting I think my main thing was I didn't vibe with the art so I ended up giving it a 3.5 and it's really hard to rate someone's life. Their experience is their experience. I'm not rating that. My level of connection to the book and what was presented and how it was presented, especially in the art style though, is what I'm more reflecting on. And for me, I just, I didn't vibe with it. It took me a long time to read, even though it was a graphic novel. But at the end of the day, I appreciate that it's out there for people that are suffering and want to feel a kinship or just to get to know a different experience I think it's important for that as well. Then I read The Door by Margaret Atwood which is a collection of poetry. I gave it a 3.5 as well. It just me and poetry is apparently a very hit and miss. I think I prefer the ones that are punchy, short, more Instagram poetry style maybe just because I like having it go rapid pace whereas with Margaret Atwood it is so descriptive and so 
in there in detail. It wasn't something that you could just enjoy it or to learn from. You really had to think about it. And for me, I was reading it before going to bed where I just wanted to switch off for the day. So that's more my error than the book in uh, reading it at a time that is not conducive to what the content is needing you to do with it to maximize it. Next up we have It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover and I gave this a 4.5 stars. The emotions that this brought out in me was very interesting mostly rage and that's cool. So this is a very difficult book dealing with a abusive relationship both emotionally and physically with predominantly emotional manipulation being the key thing and then with physical abuse occurring. It also deals with intergenerational trauma and the dealing of a mother-daughter relationship when the mother has gone through an abusive relationship and then the daughter ends up in one. It was Oh lordy, oh lord. I know a lot of people cry over this. I didn't. I think I was too enraged. I, I don't know. I, I, can, I, I think I can see why people would cry, but for me, it's not a cry book. The ending is not something that I would cry over. So I was expecting the worst. It didn't go that way, which thank Jesus. I don't think I would have survived it, but I just, I don't know. I'm so conflicted, but I loved it. It was so well written. This was my first Colleen Hoover and yeah, I'm definitely going to pick up more. I think it was just a great hard hitting contemporary. Then I read Ghostwood Song by Erica Waters. So this was a really marvelous atmospheric read. Our protagonist's father has a fiddle that he's constantly playing. It's based off country music and our protagonist is growing up in a trailer and is considered a lot of people her family is rather shunned and outcast. The relationship dynamics between everyone involved was brilliant. I loved it and it filled me with so much joy. This is a love triangle which I think was done exceptionally well considering. Kara and I both wish there was the potential for a poly relationship but we're, I'm not mad at the way that the story ended up going either. It's definitely got mystery vibes to it, very atmospheric which I just loved and I really <laughs> am struggling to articulate it because it was such a, it's the vibes that make it so amazing. I'm still waiting for my physical copy to arrive with the paper shortage that is happening and all of that good fun stuff. I don't know where it is but that's okay. I will definitely have it in my hands eventually and I'm super excited just to have a physical copy because it was so beautiful. Then if you've seen my ldr a -thon vlog which I'll leave linked up, we had some feelings, so many, and that's because I read The God of Lost Words by A.J. Hackwith, which is the third in the Hell's Library series and the conclusion to this trilogy. And I'm smiling through the pain because I am not prepared. Like, this hurts harder than the Lunar Chronicles. I, I was not prepared. I'm still screaming into a void and I need more people to pick this up and read it so I can talk to them before I start crying again. It was such an amazing end to the trilogy. I've loved this with my entire heart and soul. I don't know that this whole series will be for everyone. I feel like the Library of the Unwritten will be, but as the series progresses, I can see that it wouldn't be for everyone, but I adore this, these characters. It's the characters that get me, like, you give me good characters, I'm fucking sold. And this, no bounds. Mm. The love in this is just beautiful. I can't deal. I'm not okay. And I just, it's perfection. So this was a pre-order for November. And the day that it arrived, I was like, fuck, I'm going to throw my entire TBR out the window. So I made sure to read It Ends With Us and Ghostwood Song before diving into this. And I'm so happy that I did because I literally devoured it in a day. And I, I can't, still just a pile of gush. If you want a book recommendation for the bookception prompt for Mary Bookmas, the seasonathon one, Library of the Unwritten, and preceding the rest of the series. It's set in a library in hell and it has some of the best fucking writing, some of the best worlds, just amazing. Ah. Okay. I, I'm sorry, I can't even describe what it's about. I'm, I'm just too emotional. And the last book that I read that wasn't a middle grade is The Dictionary of Lost Words by Pip Williams. So technically this was for the buzzword challenge of reading Lost on the title. 
and then I read these two back to back. Lost words, lost words. We had a few things like that this month and it unnerved me. The Dictionary of Lost Words is a historical fiction around the creation of the Oxford Dictionary and considering it was a bound dictionary it was so fascinating. It was exceptionally beautiful writing and I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about it. Honestly I was prepared to give it three stars and I ended up giving it a 4.5 just because the way that the story unfolds is so delicate and beautiful. The writing just fully captivates you and I felt that it was so easy to follow and so accessible considering that it was talking about words which a lot of them are very fancy and I feel like this could have gone down the route of snobbery but in fact was actually trying to do the opposite and to talk about the curation and the exclusivity that you provide when someone is in charge of creating a document for the rest of the world to use. It was talking about how a whole subsection of people were not included, their vernacular wasn't included because it wasn't considered viable. It wasn't in literature, it wasn't able to be quoted and it wasn't able to be supported in use. So our protagonist is going around and capturing lost words and that in itself is just a beautiful commentary. I adored every aspect of this really. I think there was an element that became like there was a sprinkling of magic in there but at the same time linguistics and words are a sense of magic in themselves as viably shown. So I liked that element for it. I just I wasn't prepared for it and then everything else was just so expertly written and developed. It was just a really fantastic read. So these are the six out of the nine books with The Door, Marbles and Ghostwood Song uh, not included in this stack. I am so shocked at how much I got read. I know that I had three picture books and quite a few I think maybe three or four graphic novels but I still feel like I read so much and I am so proud of myself for that. I will never try and do this again intentionally. It was when we played catch up I was like oh you know I think I could keep this pace going. I'm not working for three days because I'm just dying on the couch listening to audiobooks so why not. Funnily enough I still had another six believe a reads that I wanted to get seven technically. Seven believe a reads that I wanted to get to but I ended up prioritizing the ones that I did and I'm not mad about that at all. Let me know in the comments how your November reading went. Are you getting towards goals? Have you decided, nah, I'm done. I'm just going to chill the fuck out because that's what I need. And like, fair enough, I think that's going to be my December. So yeah, let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, feel free to give it a big thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of this mess, feel free to subscribe and I'll hopefully see you in my next video. Bye!